Hey Jody here. Today I'm playing mad scientist a little bit. I'm going to try to show the effects of the angle of tungsten electrode preparation, the angle of the grind. What effect does that have on penetration? There are there are charts out there that show you this kind of thing in, in TIG welding textbooks, but I don't really like to take all that stuff at face value. I like to see it myself. So today that's what we're doing. I'm going to grind three distinctly different angles on some tungsten. And one of them's going to be pretty blunt, one of them's going to be like I would kind of do it myself by preference, and then the other one's going to be like a needle. And I'm going to run some beads. I've got a positioner set up, stationary torch, try to keep everything the same, same travel speed. I'm going to run three beads with three different tungsten angles. I'm going to slice, dice, polish, and etch, and we're going to be able to see the exact penetration that each tungsten angle gave. If you're anything like me, I think you'll find the results very interesting. If you're not anything like me, you're probably not watching this anyway. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right, I got three distinctly different tapers there, and we're gonna see what each one does. I'm gonna gap them the same, make sure they got the same arc gap, same travel speed, and I'm gonna cool it off completely in between each bead. Even with that blunt tip, I got a pretty nice crisp start because it's a really good finish from the diamond wheel. Show you the wrong way, Coarse scratches running sideways with a blunt tip can really be a problem on arc starts. You know, that arc could wander over to some little thin cooling fin or something next to where you're welding and melt it off. Could be a big problem. Here's in slow motion just because I thought it looked cool. Alright, back on track here. That's a nice stable arc with a fairly narrow arc cone. And that's the, that's the result there. All right, now I'm going to let it cool off, and I'm going to make sure it's cooled off with my little IR gun there. I'm trying to get it to right at 75 degrees every time, close enough. And we'll come next to it, maybe an inch or so away, try to do everything the same, same arc gap. Don't wait around when we start the, uh, start the arc, get, it, get things going. And I'm going to cut all these the same distance from the start point, just to try to keep it everything the same and not have the results skewed from a... Uh, a level of preheat or something. Now that's also a nice nice stable arc and the, the arc cones a little wider. A nice bead. Better a little bit better looking bead overall as far as the the ripples uh, the appearance of the ripples and everything but you know it is what it is. Lastly the needle sharp electrode. This is actually a very useful type taper here if you need to weld something thin and you don't have the right size electrode. You get a really crisp start and a really stable arc at low amperages even if you're using one size too big electrode or even two sizes too big sometimes. I've seen box cutter blades even welded with a 1 8 electrode with a tip tapered way back like this and even polished to get a good start. All right, so the first bead is the narrowest bead. That's just like the books tell you. Second one's a good bit wider. But the third one is not quite as wide as the second one. Have no idea why. But I'm going to cut them. I'm going to cut a little section out right here. I'm going to use the Metabo Slicer Plus cutting wheel with a six inch Metabo, and it's going to make short work of this. A little polish on the cross section. The better you polish something, the easier it etches. I didn't have really good polishing equipment at my shop on this particular day, so I just used Scotch-Brite. And the acid etch is a sort of a passivation solution normally for stainless steels to remove the heat tint. Now that's the result that this electrode prep gave. I'll help you out a little bit by drawing a line to define the weld nugget. The big, the big area is the heat affected zone. The small, the smaller area that looks kind of grainy is the actual weld nugget. 
All right, that's the second more tapered electrode, and here is the last one, the, the needle sharp electrode, and everything, everything is shallower here, the heat affected zone and the weld nugget, just like the books tell you, but I wanted to see so for myself. Let's get another quick look at these arc starts. I'll just puddle here momentarily, just kind of remind you what things looked like. The arc cone here was pretty narrow, and that was the result. On the second electrode, a little bit more taper, a little bit more wider arc cone, but a really, a really nice crisp start, and that yielded this weld nugget right here. And then the last one again, which is really weird, that little weird halo that's coming out midway. I think that's to do with the temperature of the electrode. It's getting really, really hot in that area, and something's happening different than on the other electrodes. And the result was this. I wanted to do one real weld here using filler metal with that most blunt taper just to kind of see if, if it still flowed good, still got a good arc start and all that, and, and it is doing a pretty good job. And I had the camera kind of in the way here, so I couldn't really optimize this, but I, I can see the benefits of using a little bit more blunter electrodes than what I've been accustomed to, especially when I want to keep the bead a little narrower and punch it in there real good. What brought this uh, to my mind was a podcast that we had not long ago, the Welding Tips and Tricks podcast. We had a guest whose name was Rush Kane. He's Kane Kid on Instagram, and he had posted three different images and three different uh, arc plumes from the different electrode preps. And I thought, let's take that to a let's take that a step further and do the actual testing with the with the cross sections, and maybe somebody will learn something. So I know I did. See you next time. Just a quick reminder, the way I support these videos is through my online store at weldmonger.com. Thanks for watching.